D, uh, before we get started, I have a, I have an update. We, I got some yeah. feedback on the uh, the episode we did. I think it was called CBs, Spandex, and and something or other. Remember about yes. the, the the grown men in in Lycra? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, there was uh, one guy who was like, "Well, you know, I wear Lycra uh, because it, it's more comfortable than wearing, you know." I think I said I wore board shorts and a t-shirt and he's like, if you're, uh -huh. if you're on a racing bike, it's yeah. really uncomfortable to wear that stuff, which, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. but uh, I mean, if I squeezed my body into Lycra, like a giant sausage, that would be uncomfortable for me. It'd be uncomfortable for people observing you as well. So that's also to be kept in mind. Right. And we also got a response on poop police yeah. One scenario that we did not think of, and I don't think we were even applying this to this scenario, but uh, yeah. one guy mentioned that he he cleans out his garbage cans regularly because he keeps them in his attached garage, which uh -huh. totally different story. Yeah. Like, you know, well, I was when when I was living in a house in a nearby suburb, I would bring the garbage cans right into the living room. Jeff, you don't <laughs> want people to mess around. Also, it's so convenient. Like we'd finish dinner. We'd have like a, you know, we would eat some fish and chips or something like that. You could just open the garbage can, put it in, put it right in there and then wheel it out on garbage day. Uh, it got in front of the television after a while. So that was a problem. So we had to change our, our, our plan there. But uh, yeah, why not bring your garbage? Steam clean it, bring it right into your living room if you're going to be that picky. Yeah, so that was one we hadn't thought of, but I, I was, in my mind, I was envisioning alleys with garbage cans. I could see if you're, you know, for whatever reason, if you have an attached garage, you don't have to go out in the weather to empty your trash. So, you know. Jeff, we're here in the Chicago area, you and I. There are communities across this great country that do not have alleys. I know it's remarkable. How do they get anywhere? How do they cut through to the next street? How do they throw? How do they get rid of like a an old box springs they don't want if they can't throw it into an alley? <laughs> Where do you throw your giant bed or old wash machine? Yes. Why? Well, so if you don't have an alley, how do you live in America? And I know that's that's strange uh, to consider for you and me. But uh, there are people that don't have alleys, and uh, I guess they they function. Well, and, and I know we try to vet all the different scenarios. That was one, uh, which, which was an interesting point. But, uh, you know, I don't know if I, even if I had an attached garage, which I don't, I would think that that is just like kind of still ringing the dinner bell to bring varmint into your garage. Even. Yes. Also, if you have an attached garage, do you have a smell barrier between the garbage and your your, your garage and your house? How, how does that work? Yeah. I, I have a friend uh, years ago. They lived in a in Maine, okay, and they had a wood burning fireplace to heat their home. It was a beautiful rustic old place, wood burning fireplace, and they had an attached shed where they put the embers from their wood burning fireplace. After they, you know, you go to bed at night, you put down the the embers, and you just shovel out the embers from the from that day's wood burning that you used to heat your home with not a care about the fact that maybe there are some live embers that you just shoveled into a, a wooden enclosure attached to your wooden home. And yes, the place burned straight down to the ground. It, flat. It, I was, why, why didn't they just wait till the next day? Why would you have to do that same day? That is ridiculous. Well, you don't want your embers hanging around just like you don't, you know, you're putting your gar garbage in the living room. You don't want that to sit around. You want to put it right into the container in your living room <laughs> right, or in your attached garage. <laughs> yeah. The you, peak efficiency, you know, you want efficiency. We have things to do. We need to get our garbage out. We need to get our burning hot, still burning embers into our shed next to our wooden house. ASAP, Jeff. Time's a wasting. That's that's wild. I do use my embers for uh, for fertilizer, though. It makes good oh, uh, oh. eggshells, coffee grounds, fireplace uh, ash. And, and at your house, they are all still red hot. Right? They're, 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 still, they're, they're the, burning. The they're, eggs are right off of the stove. The, yes. uh, the, the coffee grounds are still so smoldering. Hot. Hot, hot, very good. Uh, very good. Yeah, that's 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 crazy. So, um, well, today, Darren, we have uh, a couple of things to discuss. Yeah, and I have to start out by saying I, for one, yeah. am outraged for the first time. What for the first time in all your days, for the Jeffrey? First this is time to this, this is important. Now I'm enraged. Yeah. Did you happen to hear? Now, are are you a big sports guy? I'm not a huge sports guy, but I do My enjoy. Sports Interest goes up and down depending on the uh, fortunes of the team. Right. Well, I'm similar. So I, I enjoy baseball and I enjoy football. 
Yeah. And you play golf. And I play golf, um, but not competitively. So, uh, but I do watch, <laughs> I do watch golf, uh, you know, on the telly. Um, yeah. But when I, when I heard that USC, University of Southern Cal yeah. and UCLA are moving to the big 10. Yes. Wait, wait, wait. It's ridiculous. Completely oh. outrageous. Oh, so, um, but now, Jeff, I'm thinking of the, the topic of our of our podcast here. Because they're both in California, do they qualify as neighbors here on the Right Next well, Door podcast? Well, they do because the Big Ten is Midwest. And oh. mind you, the, the Big Ten, I don't know if anybody's noticed, but the Big Ten is no longer the Big Ten. It's the Big 14. Wait. But they so still they call, call it the Big Ten. There's 14 Why? teams that now. Make sense. Makes that no doesn't sense. Makes sense. I would be up in arms. I would, uh, I would just go to a neighbor's house, speaking of the Right Next Door podcast, and just uh, assault them with this information and see what they had to say. I'm just, I'm trying to figure, there's no tradition left in anything anymore. I mean, the when I was coming up, it yeah. was, you know, all the Big Ten were all the Midwest, obviously, schools. Yeah. And the Pac-10 were all the West Coast schools. And well, but there's there's nothing in the if you say the Big Ten, that doesn't say Midwest. Does it say Midwest Big Ten or boy we're right out Heartland Big Ten? So they can call it what they can use whatever schools they want. They can have whatever schools I they know, want. I know, but their that's jobs. the way it was. I mean, Big Ten is what Illinois, Wisconsin, well, Minnesota. The way it was. Indi- the way it was. Sodas were a dime at the at the soda fountain, Jeff, and bread was a nickel. Look, the way it was. This is as outrageous. Oh, as this, this, the this National geezer. League implementing the designated hitter. I mean, I've yeah, been a you know I've been a National Leaguer my entire life. Why geezer rage? Geezer rage is is sincere rage. It really yeah, is. Yeah, they're just ruining everything. I mean, they're it's it everything. started in baseball with the three divisions. It used to be oh, real clean, man. East versus West. Now you, know, you got are, three. They're going to be six members in a basketball court team so, uh, it, it's yeah, yeah what what's that, what is next i mean 10 players honestly, playing baseball i can't yeah well well and i don't even i didn't even realize this was happening until just this yeah. year do you know because i don't normally uh watch uh, a lot of baseball because i can't anymore because it's not on you know i refuse to pay you know three hundred dollars yeah. a month to get the package yeah but did you know that 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 in Major League Baseball in extra innings they they put a guy on second base, what in scoring position so to yeah. to eliminate uh, to try and speed up the extra innings? It's kind of like when we were playing like ball in the in the in the church parking lot. You'd be like, okay. wait a minute, this I didn't hear I didn't hear about this. Yeah. I'm assuming they put a guy on second base. I'm assuming it's one of the players that's already on the team, right? Yeah, so so <laughs> basically, if somebody gets a hit, you know, uh, you're going to get a run faster if you got a guy in scoring position. See, that is really, you know, why why again the baseball? Who, who knows what the baseball's made of these days? Uh, the bats, they're corking the bats, Jeff. Uh, it's yeah. a world gone mad. It is and, a, uh, it's a mad, mad, mad world. It's not just neighbors who are crazy. It's sports, and uh, we're railing it. We're shaking our fists at the heavens uh, to no avail. Yes. Well, and today, speaking of sports, we've speaking got... Speaking of sports. Speaking of sports, I started out with a little story about uh, some some local neighbors boycotting uh, a pickleball court. Uh, pickleball. T- what is what exactly is pickleball? Well, we're going to get into that, but this no. this dispute, uh, which I have just uh, kind of learned after researching this, is nationwide. Oh, it's it's it's. Um, so it, Big Ten, Pac Ten, they're all upset about pickleball. It's Sharks versus Jets. It's Hatfields versus McCoys. It is Mac hardcore. versus PC. It's Coke versus Pepsi. It is. It's it's wow. that intense. So we'll get into that on today's show. Dirty deeds, triggered tirades, busybodies, and missing cats. They say tall fences make good neighbors, but bad neighbors make the Right Next Door podcast. Jeff, I'm not sure the Right Next Door podcast is ready for the incendiary nature of this topic we're going into today. Yeah, I don't think so. I didn't even realize it was this incendiary until... It's too hot, Jeff. It's It's too too hot. Too hot to handle. So, uh, pickleball. What is pickleball? So, pickleball 
so there's there's three things. You've got you've got okay. tennis, yeah. you've got paddle ball, and you've got pickleball. Okay, those are three separate sports. Three separate sports. W- only one of which happens to be pickleball. Continue. Yes. And so the tennis players, you yeah. know, these are all the trim, you know, very agile athletic yes. types that can run around a court and swing a racket yeah. and, you know. Healthy. You know, their knees are good so they can still oh, cut man. right and left no problem without their youth. leg breaking in two. Youth is wasted on the young, Jeff. Right. So a lot of people that used to play tennis uh-huh. gravitate into paddle ball, which is... Okay. Uh, similar to, it's kind of like a hybrid of racquetball. I've, I played it once. It's fun, but it's an open racket. You play with almost like a, like a rubber, um, a rubber yeah. ball. I played it like one time. Yeah. It's a, yeah. You got to kind of, you have to muscle that ball over the, over the net. Yeah. So it's, it's basically tennis on a, on a small scale court. Yes. Now pickleball, which apparently is now the new rage, uh, uh-huh. I'm, was presuming because of all the boomers that can no longer even do the paddle ball. Yeah. Pickleball, you got a hard, you got a hard racket. Yeah. And then essentially a wiffle ball. So it's it's a similar size court to the paddle ball, but you play with a different racket and it's literally like a wiffle ball. And when you hit it, I will say it does make like this this noise, which uh if yeah. I was a next door neighbor and there was six courts going at one time that might be annoying it could be annoying yeah yeah so it started out where i found this little story about these neighbors were boycotting wait the a minute so, but and they're they're on different kinds of courts or some sometimes they can play them on tennis courts sometimes they can play them on paddleball courts there are pickleball courts they're there so that's why there's these three sports are up in arms right well so the little noise thing turned into yeah. a a nationwide outrage and fight between the tennis players and the pickleball players, because what's oh, happening man. is they're just striping the tennis courts so that, you know, pickleballers can play. Oh, right on the tennis, court. right on the tennis court. And so wow. the tennis players are all upset that they're losing their court time to the, pa- to the pickleball people. But they're the, the people they're losing the court time to, they're they're elderly. They're easily defeated or pushed over. You could really uh, you could just couldn't you just grab one of them and, and move them aside? Well, these, <laughs> these boomers, these boomers are really not. They're infirm. So I actually called up a friend of mine that she plays tennis all the time. Yeah. And I go and she, she I'm like, well, why don't we'll do an interview with you? And she's like, no, I'd be dropping too many F-bombs. I'm too aggravated about it. <laughs> I'm like, you're you're that upset. I go, what what's the problem? Like, are the pickleballers diapers leaking on the court? You, <laughs> got, you got to wait for the little Zamboni to go through and clean up. Like, oh, what, my Lord. what is the issue? And so she said and, and then I said to her, well, you know, how is this even a problem? I thought you played in private tennis clubs. And she goes, yeah. I am playing in private tennis clubs. Oh. So it's not just like the public park district courts this is happening. So pickleball in. is has taken over. They've gone way beyond uh, where they were before. So the pickleballers are aggressive. They're growing. And it's uh, it's an issue. It's an issue. And it's, it's kind of funny because I even found a, a post from uh, uh, Martina Nevratilova, famous oh tennis player. Yeah. And she said... Let the pickleballers get their own courts. Oh, so I was like, wow, if wow. we're if we're even at that level, if we're even like, like you know, internationally so, known tennis stars are, are chiming in yeah. against the pickleballers. Well, maybe the, there's something about those pickleballers. Then they they sound like a, an annoying bunch. There's something about are they crank? Are they we, we've been mocking them as older people. Is that is that typical? The typical pickleballer is a. I mean, I, is I an elderly, irascible. I would say we're in the demo of the pickleball. I mean, we're not that old. Don't say it, Jeff. We're, say it ain't so. We're not that old, but we would be uh, more than likely in the paddle pickleball area. So if we stepped towards a tennis court, we might we might look like pickleballers and be shunned. And uh, wait a minute, which what kind of racket is those are those guys holding? I, would, I see I, some. I come in with some my, gray hair. I I see gray hair. I see Step gray away. hair. Who's who's that guy wearing the 1980s Adidas court shoes and the oh, short no. white shorts and his little Lacoste uh, pullover? We might be wrestled to the ground by these healthy tennis people, right? So the oh, tennis man. people are 
And and uh, that was one story I was I actually laughed out loud because allegedly thirty thousand dollars worth of damage was done to these wow. new tennis courts because the, the the tape that they put over you know to to tape yeah. out the uh, somehow destroyed the the tennis court and I mean so oh. I mean can can you even imagine I mean it's it's this is like you know, a nationwide uh, argument but it's it's it sounds it sounds so big and so angry. And if there's anything, there are a lot of things happening. We're not on the right next door podcast. We don't talk about the greater world. We don't get into politics. Uh, but there's so many things happening on Earth that would seem to be of more concern than the disturbance of some pickleball players. Just the word pickleball. It's got a K in it. It's, it's, it's got just, the word pickle in it. It's fun to it's say. Kind of silly. It's, yeah. It's fun to say. And pickleball, I, I, pickleball. I've played it a couple of times. It's got yep, some yep. really goofy scoring, like the scoring in pickleball oh. doesn't make any sense. Like there's all these rules. And on, we we actually uh, played it with some friends who set up a court on their driveway. Oh, and um, it's it's funny how intense people get, you know, when you're playing a game like, I, you know, I'm just it's like my golf game. Right. I'm out to get some exercise, breathe some fresh air, hopefully not not lose more than a half dozen balls per outing. Yeah, but I've played yeah. with guys that are, you know, if we're in a tournament, we are winning this tournament and yeah, get yeah, it together. Yeah. Yeah. People are people can be aggressive. And if you're well, if you set foot into the pickleball world, you have to maybe you have to assume a certain persona, Jeff. You have to be that that hard driven pickleball person that really has an attitude. And if you're not that person, then maybe you're not aggressive enough to play on the same court as true pickleballers. Yeah. So if you're not a true pickleballer, Jeff, maybe you have no business um, playing the pickleball. Playing. Yeah. I, although I, I would say the analogy would be that the the more intense people are the paddle people, like the tennis oh. and pad, Like there's some paddle leagues that are crazy intense. Like, you well, know, people, if you, you got to try it, out for the team and oh I'm, I'm like, really, it's, it's that complicated. And so I think I the, don't want to get. What? I don't want to get a golfer angry because of the <laughs> club they have they're holding. I don't want to get a pickleballer angry. They can they can hit you with that hard paddle, you know. So if someone is is playing a, a a game that has weapons at their disposal, you know, if you're if you're playing like if you're if you if you step into a yoga class, you're not going to really get hurt, you know. Uh, I guess it's not a sport though. Although there's some yoga classes that are pretty aggressive and people really are competitive with their um, Lululemons and their. Uh, downward my downward facing dog is is better form than your downward facing dog <laughs> and my downward uh, facing dog is going to beat up is going to bite your downward facing dog i yeah. always uh because my daughter wears those lululemons and yeah. i got like some like cheapo ripoffs from like costco or someplace and they're I, called lul lula lem lemon I, I, no, I, I call them lulu limes Lulu Limes. Lulu Limes. And I'm, Your daughter was not happy. Yeah, she, she's she's uh, because uh, people are like, what are you wearing? And I'm like, Lulu Limes. <laughs> like, <laughs> what's that? <laughs> you know, and then uh, I also have these, you know, I wear glasses. So I I finally found a pair of not completely old man post cataract surgery glasses that go over yeah. my glasses. They look like Ray-Bans. Excellent. So I call those Roy Bonds because they, uh, <laughs> they're off brand. It's, uh, you know, you know, back in the eighties when, uh, when, uh, we used to call them phonase, but what, what was that big, there was a French, uh, French made, uh, sunglasses, uh, back oh, from the eighties. Oh, oh Varnay. Oh yeah. Varnay. Varnay. V U A R N E T. Yeah. yeah Varnay. And, and yeah. so we all, we all bought the ripoffs and called them phonase. So phonase. phonase. <laughs> And then Flonase, uh, if, you're, if you're feeling a little stuffy. <laughs> a little stuffed up during the allergy season. But um... Well, we, you know, all you pickleballers out there, feel free to let us know if you're up in arms. We'd like to talk to you, perhaps interview you on the pod, uh, because uh, we need to find out the, the true sources of your rage. If you're, if you're getting health, healthy, if you're on the pickleball cart, court just enjoying a good time, why are you so angry? What's... What's making you so mad? Well, we it's not. No, no, it's not. the. I don't think the pickleball people are mad. It's, oh, it, the tennis people are mad. Oh, so the because pickleball people, they're just fine. They're just, you know, uh, like my golf game. They're just out to enjoy a good time as a social gathering. You're I mean, how hard can you hit a wiffle ball for crying out yeah, loud? I mean, yeah, you, you know, yeah. you, you really got to work to get a wiffle ball across the across the net. So I think well, these the are more people. of a, a, a fun, happy go lucky crowd. And it's the yeah. tennis people. 
that, uh, you know, they're, they're upset that, you know, they can, you know, two people can play versus four. And oh. those two people can run around the court. And, you know, like I said earlier, they can cut and pivot and bob. And if I know rightly, a lot of these pickleball people are playing in their golf shoes. So they're spiking <laughs> up the court. They're causing huge, huge chunks out of the court and they never replace their divots on the pickleball they court. never you know, replace their divots. they don't and it's, you hate to see it's that. a shame so it's really it's a shame really, it's truly a shame you know but uh, have you ever played i've played pickleball a couple of times i have not but i might now i might try but it's I'm uh a- and it's, it's kind of ironic because i remember years ago we used to visit um some relatives down in florida and you know. pickleball has been around a long time and there would be nobody on the court. It would, you know, everybody oh. would be in the pool. So why, why the sudden upswing? Well, more, more baby boomers, more. I think there's more pickleball. baby boomers that have, you know, had knee replacements and, and yeah, simply yeah. can't, you know, they figured out that, you know, I haven't had any knock on wood, no replacements. You know why? I don't jog. Why? I don't yeah, do yeah. intensive sport. All my joints are fine. My joints are fine too. There's something we hear the right next door podcast, Jeff and Darren, we propose that for all our listeners, stay healthy, stay strong by staying inert. Right. Keep that sedentary lifestyle <laughs> and avoid pain and trouble. That's worked for me. I've stayed indoors, um, and and it's 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 really worked for me. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's one of those things where everybody that I know that are super sportsy, yeah, hip replacements, knee replacements, shoulder replacements. The nice thing about pickleball is there's there's yeah. four people. There's not a lot of moving. You just have to guard your little quadrant of the course. <laughs> so there's not a lot of crazy running. So could around. I play? So I could play pickleball uh, from the chair in which I'm sitting right now, Jeff. Pretty much, yeah. You just have to okay. guard your little corner this is of the, the best game ever. Yeah. Hey, you, you insanely healthy tennis people. I'm playing pickleball on your court. I'm coming for you. And I'm going to wheel my chair. This actual chair I'm sitting in right now, I'm going to wheel it onto your tennis court. I'm coming for you. I'm going to be playing pickleball. Try to push me away. Try to stop me. You could you could sit in the chair, sip a martini, and play the game Excellent. all at one time. I yeah. can't wait. I mean, I mean, honestly, you can't really, unlike a tennis ball that would be coming at you at like 90 miles an hour, yeah. you know, a wiffle ball, how fast can a wiffle ball possibly try? So even if you have, Poor eyesight, you can still see the wiffle ball coming at you. you so know. I'm play this is this is the best game. i I really didn't know much about pickleball before this conversation, Jeff. This is a sport that I could play in this chair, possibly while asleep. I think I'm 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 so there. You I'm could be toast. well eating, maybe drinking one hand in my in my uh popcorn. The other hand holding a martini right. and uh, a pickleball bat, or is it a bat? It's a racket. No, it's a, it's a, it's, it's literally a paddle. It's, it's uh, I remember when I was in Europe, they used to play kind of a version of this on, on the beach where they'd have these big wood paddles and then there was no net, you know, you just had, you had a volley with the ball. The object was not to let the ball lose the volley. Oh, like beach paddle ball. Yeah. Like beach paddle ball. Yeah. That was big in Europe, but I don't know if it still is, but last time I was there. Um, So, so I I don't know. We've solved this. We've solved this problem, Jeff. I think pickleball, I think you'll agree. We're both pickleball thumbs up. I would say I'm, I'm thumbs up pickleball. I mean, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's not a ton of exercise, but it's, it's a fun, you know, social I mean, it's kind of like playing bocce ball or, 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 you know, something like that, where it's, it's more of a, a, the the social gathering kind of a thing. Well, we're going to plan, uh, very soon. We're going to record a right next door podcast, uh, episode while playing pickleball. Are you, are you in? Are you with me? I'm in. Yes. We're going to need two more players though. So we're going to need, we can play on one team. We'll be team podcast pickleball. Okay. And then we'll play, we'll have to find some novices because I'm sure there's a lot of people that are as intense about their leagues as the paddle people are. I'm excited about that episode, Jeff. You have a neighbor who's driving you crazy. Tell us about it. Right Next Door Podcast at gmail.com. The Right Next Door Podcast is an unscripted production of Eversharp Media, which takes a satirical look at local news coverage and social media. The material, views, and opinions expressed are not necessarily those of the talent, guests, or the production company. Celebrity voices impersonated, including this one.